looking to do a solar powered network deployment of security cameras or similar equipment? Then look no further than Ytech's Network PoE switch with an integrated solar controller. The built in MPPT style controller is capable of up to 15 amps of charge current, and the PoE switch can provide up to 120 watts of power budget. This first little switch allows you to run either sealed lead acid or lithium style batteries and at two different voltages, either 12 volt or 24 volts. All of the different functions are controlled on this switch using a series of dip switches, making the setup extremely easy. And while the switch on its own is very cool, the integration of an IoT controller from Ytech makes this go to the next level. Using the integrated RS-485 connection from the switch, this box will allow you to remotely see the solar charge rate, the load capacity, and the current battery levels of your solar deployments. Additionally, it also allows you to see all of these same metrics over a time period, and you can export that data out of the system into Excel. In order to properly use this device, you will first need to connect an RS-485 connection from the IoT controller to the solar-powered PoE switch. Make sure that when you're connecting the RS-485 connection that you observe the RS-485A and B connections on both sides to ensure they have proper polarity. This connection is how all of the data is sent from the solar controller to the IoT controller. So it is very important that this is connected and properly set up, otherwise you will not be able to report out any of your solar metrics remotely. Now that that part is done, we'll move over to powering the IoT controller. The easiest way to power it up is going to be using PoE, so we are going to be connecting to the PoE input on the controller, and then on the solar powered switch, we'll be connecting to one of the 30 watt outputs. These are the two connections that you need to make sure that you have done in order for these devices to communicate with one another. Next, we're gonna to go to connecting the batteries and the solar panels to the PoE network switch. Using Ytech's outdoor IoT enclosure, we're gonna go ahead and get the switch and the IoT controller mounted onto the integrated shelves. Once we get those mounted onto the shelves, we can go ahead and turn around the PoE switch so that we can get to the connectors located on the back. You're gonna need a small slotted style screwdriver in order to adjust these screws. And here you can see that we're gonna have the solar inputs first and then the battery inputs after. So starting with the right side, this is the battery positive and battery negative input. To the right of this, you'll see a dip switch and then a diagram showing which each position on the dip switch does. Position one is used to control power for the PoE switch itself. Position two is to select between lead acid or lithium. Position three is for a specific type of lithium battery. And number four is to select between 12 or 24 volt inputs. Now let's move on to connecting the battery to the PoE switch. Here I have my jumper cable that I've already created with a fuse holder. The fuse holder is just in case you get any direct shorts that you do not have any risk of fire. So go ahead and get a 10 amp fuse mounted inside of here. Now that I've got that fuse in place, I'm going to connect the two wires for the battery input off of the PoE switch. All we have to do here is really just slide the wire into the cup and tighten it down, making sure to observe the polarity for positive and negative. And after you get those connected, uh, I also like to make sure the connector is tightened into the PoE switch itself. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect the positive and negative terminals of the battery, making sure to observe the polarity to ensure that you have the positive and negative in the correct position. Also, I had this in 24 volt mode, so I'm switching it to 12 volt. Um, as long as dip switch position one is down, the switch is off. So until you flip that position up, nothing's going to be active. Next, we're going to connect the solar panel into the solar input of the PoE switch. Once again, make sure that you observe your polarity when making these connections. 
Once you have the screws tight, go ahead and double check your polarity. So here you can see that the solar panels actually have the positive located on the left, whereas the battery, the positive is located on the right. So just a little bit of something to pay attention for when you're doing these connections. Now just flipping up position one on the dip switch will activate the switch and turn it on and it'll go through its boot up cycle. You'll see a series of green lights flashing as it goes through this. Uh, it usually takes about 30 seconds to a minute to kind of get fully booted up and have it recognize all of the connections. Now flipping back over to the front side of the PoE switch. Here you can see we already have the IoT device connected on one of the PoE outputs. Next, we're gonna go ahead and make its network connection. So these two here are 24 or 48 volts, depending on how you set the dip switches for them. Uh, in this particular case, I have a 48 volt antenna. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it in to one of these outputs. And this is going to connect this box to my network in my store. Now I'm going to make the next connection to the PoE box. This is going to be a short jumper cable that I'm going to connect to a security camera. So I'll just be using a bullet style camera from Uniview and making this connection right here. And then go ahead and let the camera boot up and connect into the switch. So uh, on the PoE switch itself, some of the switch ports have uh, PoE lights and link lights, like you see here on the yellow cable and on the white cable. But on the 24 and 48 volt uh, hybrid ports, they just have a gigabit light and a link light. And since the antenna is only operating at sub gigabit speeds, it does not have that light lit up. This concludes the physical connections. So let's move on to adding the IoT controller to the YTech app. So on the app, I'm going to tap the project I'd like to use. In this case, we supply, swipe up from the bottom, and then hit add device. And on this screen, I'm going to hit the small scan icon to open up my camera. Once the camera is open, I'm going to scan the serial number from the IoT controller. Then I'm gonna click add and then add the last six digits of the IoT controller's MAC address. Here it's gonna search for devices. In this case, I've already added all of the other devices to my account, so they already show that they are bound. So I'm just gonna click finish and then go back into my project screen. From here, I click on the icon and then click again on the IoT controller page. And here you can see the statistics from the solar system itself, including the charging power, the current load, and the current charge level of the battery, all remotely accessible. And here is the solar camera that is connected to this wireless solar array system and being transmitted by antenna back over to my main network. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see either of these demo systems in action, please come to either one of our locations and we would be glad to show you.